Hi, Mary Christine. We are so happy we have you with us at Astra Yoga Life Trips. Um, and thank you very much for having us too in here in Dubai. I'd like to ask you some questions today regarding nutrition, health, and of course, how could someone really um, create a life out of it? Uh, however, let's first start by you introducing yourself and tell us a little bit about your whole journey. Thank you so much, Penelope. I really, really appreciate uh, you getting me involved in this. As you know, I'm really passionate about retreats myself. I've hosted uh, a few and uh, more than anything, I find that getting people together is pretty much my passion. And uh, thank you and I feel blessed. So a little bit about my background, who I am. My name is Mary. I'm a holistic nutrition and gut health expert. I have been based in Dubai for quite a long time, over a decade and it's uh, pretty much been my home. I am well-traveled, so I've been to actually over 70 countries in the world, um, really promoting health and wellness. I have been running my own business now for the last three years, really focused on uh, whole body health transformation. So um, I love to collaborate and do collaborations with uh, people like yourself who are like-minded and to, yeah, to, to, to change the concept and the mindset of uh, the people out there because we have so many lives to change. Yes, that's so true. We would like for you to answer some questions today uh, so that we give an insight to all the people who are with us at Astro Yoga Life Trips and uh, we give some help to them for their everyday lives. How would you describe the whole body health? So whole body health, which I think a lot of people have this misconception of what that means, but um, when it comes to nutrition especially, whole body health encompasses spiritual, mental, physical and emotional well-being, but also that one is not more important than the other. What is your advice to people who need to reset their beliefs about exercise? You know, that's funny because I work with a lot of clients who really just don't like going to the gym. And I think what tends to happen is our society has actually programmed us into thinking that exercise is more than just movement. You know, they have, but in reality, it's really just about movement. So when clients come to me and say like, I don't really enjoy going to the gym, I find that so mundane, they relate uh, going to the gym with pain and punishment. Yeah. And in reality, it isn't really about that, right? So what I like to do with my clients is I create a reframing technique. So when they say to me that they don't like going to the gym, I say to them, why don't you start doing things outdoors? Find an activity that you enjoy, even if it's a brisk walk, because this will make you feel great. It will make you feel strong. It will make you feel powerful. And what that happens is then you're reprogramming your body into believing that this is how you need to feel and do to feel good about yourself. Another very important question, um, it's like, why is sleep so much important for us? This is an amazing, amazing question actually, because I think most people take this for granted. I work with a lot of entrepreneurs, C-level executives, people who've really climbed the success ladder and they don't believe that sleep is important. They actually look at sleep as a waste of time. And what tends to happen is when we are sleep deprived and we only have five hours left to sleep, it, studies have shown that 18% of our uh, hormone that is related to uh, feeling full uh, decreases and our hunger um, hormones that is related to feeling more hungry increases by 28%. Now what that means is that we are then eating 22% more calories in a day just to be able to uh, operate better. Now another thing is when we're sleep deprived we end up uh, more likely to eat foods that are unhealthy opposed to eating foods that are healthy. In terms of nutrition, uh, many people struggle with uh, losing weight. So tell us some of your tips for these people who wish to lose weight. All right, now I think a lot of people uh, also are very confused in this aspect because they think there's a perfect diet. There's no such thing as a perfect diet. There's a lot of fad diets out there, but there isn't really a perfect diet because we're all unique and we all have unique biochemistry, which means that, you know, what your problems would be would not be the next. So all programs are meant to be customized. Now, um, there's so many tips out there, but I'm going to give you two really simple and easy ones which uh, I think if people perfect, they will really lose weight. So the first tip is to really eliminate processed foods from your diet. Studies have shown that uh, people who eat 
more processed foods actually end up having 500 more calories per day than those that do not eat processed foods. When you calculate that, that's 15,000 more calories per month. So that's massive in consumption. Tip number two, we need to eat until we're 80% full. The reason why most people don't eat 80% full is because we were raised to finish all the food that we have in our table. Now, aside from eating 80% full, we also need to understand the structure in which we need to eat our foods. So it's really important that you have your foods with vegetables and salads first, so the greens, then you have it with the proteins second, and the third being um, the healthy carbs as well as the fats. That meaning because greens and vegetables and salads actually contain a lot of fiber, which helps us be full for longer. Many people don't enjoy tracking their calories. What is a good alternative to that? Yeah, that's actually really true. Nobody likes to count their calories. And also it's it's actually really very, very hard for you to track it unless you're going around with a weighing a food scale everywhere you go. Um, and also, a lot of the restaurants that we eat outside or we order delivery don't actually state the amount of calories that they put or um, they give you misinformation. So it's, it's not as easy to track calories unless you're creating food at home. So an alternative that I like to use with a lot of my clients is uh, I focus on intuitive eating. What that would mean is uh, it's portion controlled. So I uh, do it in a state where 50, 30, 20 rule. Now the 50, 30, 20 rule is actually very easy to follow because 50% of what you're eating is non-starchy vegetables. 30% uh, will be the protein and 20% will be the starchy carbs and uh, natural fats. Why are not all fruits created equal? Did you think that they were created equal? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, let's just simplify this answer because you know I can go on and on and there's so many varieties and different versions of actually stating why fruits, not just fruits, but why food in general or calories in general are not created equal. Now, I would like to talk about two different concepts. The first concept being um, glycemic load and the second concept being glycemic index. Now, glycemic index basically is a, a measuring tool which measures the glucose level of what each fruit uh, the spike within our body, right? So that's basically glycemic index. Now, what tends to happen is uh, when we're eating different kinds of fruits which contain different kinds of glycemic index, uh, our sugar spikes based on that. And if you don't know what those are, you end up overeating and you're constantly on spike throughout the day. Now, the thing is with the glycemic index is that it can only tell you how much of a percentage each um, fruit is in terms of the content. So let me give you an example, a watermelon. So the watermelon is actually have a glycemic index of 72 and that's quite high in the sugar content but because it contains a lot of water like many other fruits the glycemic load is actually only four which means that um, you're not actually taking in a lot of sugar per serving. Now um, in 1997 actually uh, Harvard developed a, uh, a concept called the glycemic load because this actually measures the amount of um, sugar uh, is per serving. So it gives you a better understanding on how much you're having per serving. It's really important to have a glycemic load at a very low percent, which is lower than 11. Now, let's give you an example. Um, bananas are quite high. They are a 16%. Uh, so which means that if you're having bananas every day with various other foods, you're always on a, on a blood sugar spike. So the good basis for you to know is that constantly look at your glycemic load uh, in terms of the, uh, the variability when it comes to foods for you to know which kind of food you're having, which is higher quantity of sugar and the ones that you're having. Less. Why does eating dairy cause gut inflammation? What tends to happen is that we actually don't produce an enzyme called lactase anymore as we get older. And when we don't produce this enzyme, we have a problem digesting dairy. What are your thoughts on negative self-talk and how do you help people overcome that? All right, that's a really good question, actually. Um, thank you so much for asking that because I think a lot of people really need to hear this. Now, I believe that negative self-talk really stems from childhood trauma. What I mean by that is that most people live their adult life without healing from all of their past aggressions, past trauma. And how I love working with my clients is in a way that I focus on 
really understanding the deep root cause of a lot of their uh, past trauma. I find modalities to help them heal with that. I uh, teach them on um, self-affirmations, self-celebration. I get them to work with that on our day-to-day -day living. And uh, this really programs your brain into thinking that you have self-worth. How does stress affect your weight loss goals? Stress is actually one of the main reasons why we hold on to excess weight. Um, there are so many studies that have shown that we alter our eating habits by 80% when we're stressed. When we're also uh, sleep deprived because we're stressed and that ends up making us gain more weight. Why do you think that a community is important? You know, there's that saying that your vibe attracts your tribe. And uh, I just think like in general, uh, a community is an environment that, of people that support you, who motivate you, who do the same things that you do. And um, I do believe that together we're stronger than when we're on our own. So every time that I work with clients or when I promote it to the people that I know, um, it's very, very difficult to focus on weight loss, focusing on change of mindset when you are doing it on your own. Like, why do we hire specialists? Why do we hire consultants? Why do we hire people the best at their field to, to help us elevate in life? We end up becoming part of a community, right? And I believe that there's always strength in numbers. I believe together we're better, and that's why I believe that Whenever you're starting any kind of weight loss journey or any kind of journey into bettering and optimizing your health, you can never do it alone. Community is super important. This talk has been so very insightful and I really think that so many people are going to benefit out of it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that.